So where do these numbers come from? Well, let's first talk about the function that defines the normal distribution. So for any normal distribution, the mean is represented by mu, and the standard deviation here is represented by sigma. And the function for the normal curve is this function here. And notice that my only variable here is x. Mu, sigma, e, and pi are all numbers, where mu and sigma will be given to us, they're our mean and our standard deviation, and x is the only thing that's a variable within this function. So, for any mu and sigma, I can plug them into this function to get the normal curve for that given normal distribution. So let's just say that my mean is 0 and my standard deviation is 1. So if I plug mu and sigma into our function here, I would end up getting something like this. Then, if I wanted to graph this function, I would get a graph that looks something like this. Since our mean is 0 here, our normal curve kind of splits the y-axis. And then the standard deviation kind of defines the spread of our normal distribution. Now, the normal distribution represents a continuous probability density function. And when you're working with continuous probability density functions, the probability at an individual point is always going to be zero. But then the probability of intervals is going to be equal to the area underneath the curve within that interval. The probability of, say, x being zero is going to be zero because I can't take the probability of a point. But say the probability from zero to one is going to be represented by the area under this curve from zero to one, which is equal to this. 